Hello, this is Ben with Solvering LLC. In this tutorial, I'm going to go over some of the more common issues you may encounter when loading in an STL file into the step in step application. I'm going to use Blender to generate my initial geometry. And for this case here, I'm just going to go ahead and select all by pressing A, and then A again, and then deleting it, the initial bodies using X or the delete key. I'm going to insert the shape using Shift A. And then from the pop-up menu, I'm going to select Mesh and Monkey, which is just the default body that we've seen before. I'm going to go ahead and export this to an STL file. I'm going to place it on the desktop. I'm just going to call it Susie, because that's the name of that sample file. Now I'm going to go ahead and open up InStep. Note that I'm using the design license here since I'm going to use some of the more advanced features of the application. I'm going to start off by importing the file. And once it's loaded, it's going to go through and check for any issues. Now with this file, you'll see that it actually finds a whole bunch of issues and they're actually all located around the eye sockets. If you select any one of these areas, it'll give you a pointer and it'll briefly explain what the issue is all about. You'll see the only issues we found are actually unattached edges. You may see this issue here where the shapes somewhat overlap and you expect it to be a pierced facet, but that's actually not the case because these are two separate bodies, so they're not recognized as being pierced. I can go ahead and close this, and what I'm going to first off start with is to name the body so I know what I'm dealing with. But to do so, I can just click on the part and then go in and call this right hand eye. I'm going to call this the left hand eye. I'm going to call this the head. This makes it easier for me to know which body I'm dealing with. I'm now going to go ahead and I, I want to actually delete both of these eyes out of my set of data. I can do this here by right click, selecting the body, then right clicking and delete. Note that this menu here is a bit tricky to work with. If you have an awful lot of bodies, this will take very long to load. So be careful when you're working through bodies and going to edges and vertices because there's usually a lot of those there. You can limit the amount of data by clipping it by setting these values to actual numbers. Zero to minus one just means all. And you want to set clip and children. So if you expand a body, they will also clip the below uh, items. Once you've done all the work in here, just go ahead and click OK and it'll update the geometry. There's a little quirk in this application actually that we'll fix for the next release in that the data that was in there is removed from the active set, but it's still part of the overall data set. So we're going to go ahead and first export this, and we're just going to call it SUSE2, but we're going to keep it as an STL file. Once that is complete, I'm going to go ahead and re-import the second file. And it'll go through again, it'll tell me there's still issues with the edges because we haven't quite fixed those yet. But there's fewer of them because the eye sockets are no longer there. So to fix these holes is a, a useful tool here, which is the hole patching tool. Now, this tool will work in most cases and it'll try and brute force all the others. So be careful when you're dealing with this. Anytime you have surfaces that are dark black in color, it means you're actually looking at the back side of a triangle. And this is very important. You, everything on the outside should actually be the front side. Now you will see areas where it's darker like here where the light doesn't quite reach it, but you should be able to distinguish between the inside dark gray and actually darker region from the, the light effect. So I'm going to go ahead and close these two, these two shapes, and it's quite quick in most cases, and I'll go ahead and just patch this up. Now, I'm going to go ahead and export this again a third time, just to make sure that the data within the file is okay. I'm going to go ahead and re-import this third file. And you can actually see that these file size are all just slightly different. Now when it's loading in, it should tell you there's no issues detected. I'm going to go ahead and export this file 
I'm just going to keep it SUSE 3, but now I'm going to export this as an STP file. With that done, I can close down the InStep application and I'm going to open up the STP viewer, which is just a file I'm using to see if the files are correct. I'm going to select the file that I've just created, which would be the only step file. When it loads, you actually see that the body is as it was intended. If you take a closer look at the eye sockets, you'll also see how those features were patched up. You see the triangles that fill in these voids. Now, if you only have the, the basic or even the free version, this obviously doesn't really help that much. And you probably want to find a different way of loading some of these files with overlapping or problematic features. I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do this. First, I'm going to go ahead and just delete everything I've created so far, just to keep the style of a clean slate. I'm going to go back into Blender, which is where we left off. And I'm going to manually fix these two eye socket parts. To do that, I have to get actually edit the part. I do that by clicking Tab and then pressing A to deselect everything. Now it's kind of tricky to select the right parts here, so I'm going to switch over to a face selection mode and I'm going to click in one of the triangles I know are part of the eyes and I select by right clicking which is different from most CAD applications. Now to select all the triangles that are attached to this body Blender has a very neat tool built in. You can use the um, shift num and then the plus on the num lock pad and that will just grow your selection. You can click that a few times until all of the parts have been selected and then deleting these using X and selecting faces. And you'll see all of those were deleted but it didn't expand on. I'll do the same thing on the, on the left hand eye. Right click to select and then control plus and this is the plus on the numpad not, not the plus on the keyboard. Select all of them X to delete and select faces. Now we're still left with these empty sockets and these need to be fixed because that's a special thing about the STP format is it needs a solid body that's closed, can't use just a shell for now. So I'm going to switch over to the line edge select and I'm going to select an edge which is part of the overall eye socket that I want to close. I'm going to select with pressing the Alt key and the right mouse button and I'll actually do a loop select. So I'll select all the edges that form a loop. Now in order to close this I'm first going to have to extrude those edges using the E button which generates this shape which is free floating. But I don't really want to extrude any direction so rather than fixing anywhere without pressing anything on the mouse I'm going to hit S for scaling, and I'm going to scale it to zero using the zero button. And you can see now that it's fully closed. I can undo that with the right mouse button in case you have any issues in that. So let's go ahead and close these up. Alt right button, extrude, scale to zero, and enter. I'm going to repeat the same on the other eye socket. Extrude, scale, zero, enter. And that's that. That closes up the eye sockets for, so that we have a solid body. I'm going to exit the editing mode using the tap button again. I'm going to go ahead and export this shape as an STL file. I'm going to drop it on the desktop again uh, and I'm going to call it just Suzy Solid. I'm going to go ahead and import that into InStep and you should find that there's no issues with this file. If I go ahead and export this as a step file,
and then we're going to load it into the STP view just to make sure everything is where it's supposed to be. And that's that. That's how you go about closing up uh, openings within bodies. Again, if you have any questions to this, send us an email to support at solveering.com or visit our forum to, to learn about extra features.